They kind of just are happy to not play this game where they pressure and go for a ton of kills as long as Arteezy's farming, they feel comfortable in the late game. And like you say, Luna SF, you can match up in the late game. You've got the dire side where you've got better farming options for Ancients and things. So perhaps a, a clear decision by VGJ to go head to head with EG in a late game scenario. Both teams trading their runes. It's like they're going to give one to Yang here. Will be SF with a better block though, thanks to the eye shots. Okay. That is one of the strengths of the Tusk, normally blocking it for the off lane, but looks like he is going to do so for the safe lane here, or mid lane rather. Are you also missing block? Or is that intentional, do you think, sending well, that range creep Look at out. Fade, he's just like walking yeah. forward, making sure the creep wave is exactly where he wants it to be. Yeah, you block that wave and then you get it perfectly on the hill. It's going to be a tough mid lane, Dazzle will be forced to help things out here to ensure that SF does not get all the free souls in the world early on. For top lane, Nyx Assassin, trying to bully out Ao a bit, going for an early point in Impale, hasn't had to use it just yet. And bottom lane, the Morphling 1v1 against the Brewmaster. I like this choice a lot by EG, there is a 0% chance that Arteezy will die in this lane. And look at him, he is able to actually morph most of his damage, uh, sitting at what, 400 HP, no fear, and it's gonna just clap on uh, Yang for a bit. Yeah. I guess even if he has a support there, he's getting Drunken Haze and missing a few CS, so... Unless that Dazzle is gonna provide kill potential, it's perhaps not necessary for the support to be there. I mean, and much more importantly, SF getting free souls from the get-go could be a big problem. Anticipation here as we get a... Uh, pause coming out here. Jay quickly ready to, to go. SF already five souls. Nothing crazy, but that's kind of the, the idea that you do get those early souls thanks to the presence of the task. So I do imagine that VGJ is going to make a move in the mid lane probably after the rune check at 2 minutes. Generally that's when Shadow King hits about almost level 3 with a good rune and a good shard. They could definitely set up a kill on maybe yeah. the Dazzle. And that's the thing, Dazzle's not a hero that's going to be able to necessarily pick up those runes as easily and, and doesn't want to move around. There's more a let's sit behind my core kind of role. We'll see Misery get the early point in Poison Touch to try and offer some harass, but runes coming out. See if any big two-minute runes do come into play for some of these roamers like the Tusk or Nyx Assassin. Dazzle is actually going to beat Tusk to the rune. We'll take the regen for himself. Biggest deal, as he was pretty full on health and mana, but more importantly, denying potential rune from the opposition. Crit's now gonna point in mana burn, so he's trying to deplete the disruptors to prevent those thunder strikes from being spammed out. No clarities on the disruptor either at this point. There's a rogue creep. I don't know what this is about. Up on the top lane. Ran back into the tower, and now it's gonna get denied. Things happen. Game's still in beta. It's okay. <laughs> that creep's still in beta. But yeah, so, I mean, right now it seems like despite the 2v2 in mid, 2v2 up top, it is kind of a, a passive laning stage. Neither team is feeling like they're under pressure to go for a lot of kills. I say that, Fade is actually coming up top, perhaps thinking this is where the first blood is going to come. There's the snowball in, crit, getting initiated on, there's going to be a nice ice shot block, first blood picked up. Rest in peace to Ian, who is not here to push his button. Yeah, and not only that, they have drawn the TP from the Dazzle up top. That means Freeze is going to get a true 1v1 against Sphere in the mid lane. And right now, Freeze is going to get the massive damage advantage. You think this is what favors VGJ then, to have the true 1v1 mid? I think so, especially with the favorable matchup now that Shadowfin has so much more damage. Yep. Well, it's easy going to continue to be left alone and has not hampered his farm at all. He's top of the CS charts for now. Picking up Bounty Runes, doing just fine. Has a bottle queued up, so if he's going to be in a 1v1 and picking up Bounty Runes, he wants to have that bottle to get extra value, as he can get two runes at once off. And mid lane, Fear in trouble. He's been blocked by the shards. There's still a snowball as well. There's one more raise if they need it. He throws it, gets the nice triple raise. As Fear goes down, Shadow Fiend picking up the kill. That is a concern here for uh, EG in the mid lane. Yesterday, Fear also lost the mid lane in this exact matchup, and that's why I kind of threw that question to you earlier. Uh, we'll see if EG is going to be hampered by the, the weak mid lane for now. Yep. Rune's coming up again, this time a double damage up top. Again, we see Arteezy going for the double bounty rune yep. with his bottle. He is giving the Brewmaster a lot of CS in lane by doing this, but Yang also has bought a bottle of his own, and 
That bottle is not getting refilled. Oh, Chris did lose the race to the double damage room. Now he's in trouble. Face is going to right click him down. Fia comes in, perhaps trying to save his buddy here, but Crit's still very low now. Oh, nice side shots block. Here comes the Shadow Fee. He could raise him off here. One more raise is necessary, but he already used a long one, and of course, doesn't really have any mana left. Oh, the chase is on. Chris being caught. One, more, one or two more right clicks could spell his demise, but Dazzle's there with a heal. That'll save his life. A very interesting disruptor skill bill here, actually taking up the Thunderstrike ability, 0 0.2 Glimpse. It does make sense given the lane that he's up against, but he is going to suffer uh, down the road here without having the yep. ability to pick up extra kills. Now, Hell up top. Styla. Oh my, that heal bomb destroys the Luna and they get a kill on the VGJ carry. Yeah, and that is the weakness uh, of the safe lane that I was uh, somewhat concerned about in the drafting phase. EG finally does pick up a kill here, but back in the mid lane. Made, yep. Yeah. Like another couple of raises. This Tusk has been all over the map, having a very big impact. And the concern for a Death Prophet that's falling behind is that even though she has Crypt Swarm to catch back up, she will always be a step behind the Shadow Fiend. And I feel like throughout the whole game, Shadow Fiend's gonna find free pickings on, on Fear. Yep. Bottom lane, we haven't talked too much about. Yang is pretty even on CS, had to go back and shrine up. Arteezy having kind of a regen advantage because of the bottle. He's picked up four bounty runes. Already, I feel like that's something Brewmaster maybe needed to contest with his own bottle. He's got one now. We'll see if he stops Arteezy from getting these next couple of rooms. Misery smoked up, we'll look to put down an Observer War. Top lane, it's Nyx Assassin going down in response to the Disruptor kill. Uh-oh, Yang might be in a lot of yeah. trouble here. He Maybe. is gonna port away. But Dazzle was trying to come on in with a ward. Now he's been scattered, so he may have to be careful about where he puts the ward. Yeah, he's going to change the spot immediately. Yeah. Uh, there was a ping from the dire side, expecting him to ward a spot. Yeah. Yeah. If you can get in there undetected, you want to kind of get the ward on the cliff, which is the ideal spot. But once you've been scouted, it's much more important to make sure that ward does not get dewarded. Top lane, they're TPing in multiple heroes, but this is being scouted. Yes. Dire vision on the cliff sees everything coming Luna's way. So far, I gotta say, misery. Apart from the big heal bomb. He hasn't really contributed much uh, to the team, which I guess is somewhat to be expected for a Dazzle. You don't really expect him to make big plays for now. Yep. How's this early game feeling for you? You think both teams pretty content? Either one have a bit of an edge at all? I say the bottom lane is a wash. Uh, RTZ is getting as he expected, but you know Yang's getting quite a bit as well. The mid lane being heavily won, but the top lane is my big concern right now for VGJ as here comes a big dive on Silar. Oh, Sumail. Getting fairly low, but he's brought Silo even low. He actually walks back into him, gets Infernal Blade again. Silo ticking away, will burn down. Three points in that Infernal Blade. Shadowbeam was rotating in, trying to get these kills. Sumail trying to TP out, it gets cancelled. Great play from Bane, stop stopping the great TP. Sumail will pay with his life. Raise used, just for the exclamation mark, as Misery up top. On the run, he's gotten this tower down very low with his team. The Siege Creep will finally oh. be finished off. Misery needs to TP out, but I don't believe he's got a TP. It's on cooldown, even if he buys one. Oh, he needs some very sick juke, but he's gonna get vision here from Io. Can he get this kill? No, he won't. Nah, poison Touch not gonna yeah. offer enough damage. A lot of time being wasted. As Fear is having some much needed alone time in mid lane. Does end up going down, but yes, Fear on the Death Prophet. Some uncontested farm mid. Bottom lane Brewmaster was still lurking around as we'll see 8 minute runes coming up. This time the, uh, the off lane Brew and Morph trading one apiece. More importantly the Illusion rune is here and Arteezy will snag that one. The bottom lane is really showing a, a big difference here as top lane, Fade. We'll be in some trouble. Doesn't have mana for the snowball and again the Infernal Blade chewing through VGJ, Sumail. His aggression really showing here. Something he'd love to showcase in the mid lane, but perhaps even more suited to this off lane. And a Brewmaster split being thrown out just to save his life here. Maybe actually get able to get a kill on Misery. Has the Cyclone if he wants to go for it. Yep, we'll buy some time with a TP in from AO. Misery should be going down here. Snowball gonna stop any sort of a grave. Narteezy may have to back off here. He wants to kill this Brewmaster. He's waiting for him to pop out. Can he actually get this? The waveform through will not hit. Arteezy steals the Brewmaster form with the Replicate. Now he's getting pulled back in. He's trying to make some plays, but unsuccessful. If he'd managed to actually hit the waveform on the Brew, may have gotten the kill here. Arteezy getting low though. Needs to be careful. He's morphing straight. Here comes Sila. No eclipse, but Arteezy's out.
Wave out with the last bit of mana that he had, and Luna did not have an Eclipse, not that he may have been able to connect with it anyways. Both players just baiting each other out, using a full Magic Wand. Uh, we're gonna watch this team fight one more time, and do notice that once the Brewmaster split ends, Yangso goes in, recognizing that he has a pretty big Magic Wand, and he is able to survive that engagement. Can't see into that replay, a bit of aggression coming out in the mid lane in real time, but nothing too much. As it was a very flashy play attempt coming out from Arteezy. Yep. But not quite successful. So w with the first usage of the ultimate here for Arteezy, do you feel like there's any amazing spell that you could steal uh, from... Well, not steal, but you know, like replicate from the yeah, other side. Yeah, utilize. Uh, that, that may disrupt. There's not really a whole lot, I guess. Disruptor's glimpse, perhaps, is the best well, one. The problem is you, you have to be like the cast range of replicate is such that I don't think you're ever going to find a way to use glimpse effectively. Sure. What we're seeing mostly is like just in that fight, you use the ultimate quickly, grab one spell, use it, and then immediately morph back to your, your traditional form. Which is where things like Terrorblade, Metamorph are fantastic. Yeah, we in the one game that we saw our TZ play, not not only Metamorph, but also Reflection. Reflection, yeah. Illusions, you know? Yeah, yeah, just getting free Aurea for a team. Bottom lane, nice. Misery. Called out. We've seen five position support struggle a bit. They may not actually be able to get this kill. As Silo looking for that last loot to be nice. Juke behind the tree, Misery. Saves his life, but unfortunately for Sumail, he may not be able to catch up to the Luna here. Great connect fill, Bull. Create enough of a uh, bit of distance there. Actually, they could sh uh, smoke right up after this, yeah, and I don't off. think Ichi will expect it. Maybe they want this brew, or they want to force out another primal split. He's got it back up though. He's okay. It's gonna be a smoke from the mid lane. Looks like the Shadow Fiend and Corruptor headed down there. Brewmaster being left alone to farm his Blink Dagger, so they're not bringing Yang in to get involved with the primal split. Instead, they're playing around their other two cores. Husk needs to hit this disable. He's pretty much the only disable here. Oh, they got Sumail. He's got no TP to get out of this one. There's the Lucent mid to follow up. Misery sitting behind Sumail, but not sure he can really save his life. Crit goes out for the Carapace. Can he hit a good Impale here? He wants to get Fade on the back lines. Will bring him down with the Impale. Back in the main fight, though, Dazzle gets brought down as a secondary kill and Crit. No Carapace, Vendetta, Impale. He's got nothing to really play around. May actually go down here as well. And look to continue to run around in circles by as much time as possible, but there is no escape for him. Freeze is crushing it on the Shadow Fiend. I gotta say, I'm very impressed with AO's play so far. Again, Disruptor is just not an early game dominating support, but he's involved in eight kills for his team. Just through good positioning and good kinetic fields. Mid lane, there's the blink reveal of swords. Yang did have mana if he popped his wand, but... I think recognized Sphere was about to heal up with the Exorcism, so there was no chance to get that kill. I gotta say, very strong recovery for Fear, despite dying once or twice in the mid lane. Second at net worth here, and actually eclipsing the Shadow Fiend. And that's a top three net worth currently all on the EG side. Yeah. It's a pretty small gold lead overall, but when you look at cores like that, that's def definitely a good sign. Dire Scam will... Clip Sumail here. I'm not sure if they realize it was just him. They're gonna go in the primal split. Misery behind, but I think he's just gonna leave Sumail for dead. As Disruptor even gonna drop the static storm. A bit overkill, but they were unclear how many heroes were down there. I think the scan made them made them believe there were more. They're looking for a glimpse here. Can they find Misery? He's tucked himself in some trees. Can TP out, but would rather I think lurk around this bottom lane if possible. Uh, yes. I also looking. <laughs> Misery pops out. Did they see him? Not sure that's the case. He will go close to this ward fairly soon. Doesn't look like they're gonna find the Dazzle kill. More importantly, EG. Space created. Arteezy farming up top. Fear doing some damage to the mid tier one tower. Here comes DJ though. Crit, invis up. Will actually scout the ward being planted. Really good intel being picked up by EG. Yeah, they really need to tend to this top lane and at least get it pushed out. Don't let Arteezy get too much tier 2 building damage. And he is. Very good ward here for EG. Pretty much protecting the way that Arteezy wants yep. to play. Very classic wards what we're seeing a lot of is... VGJ, it feels like... Fear, oh, mid lane, crit. Okay, good fake out here. They have Glimpse, cancel that TP. 
and freeze. A, yeah, mega kill streak. Yeah, very well played. It seems like the early game has gone well enough for VGJ. They're like a little bit behind. The cores are being slightly outfound. The SF's actually back on top now, but it does seem like they need to spend some time just prioritizing the farm, particularly on Luna. It seems like they've been overemphasizing going for kills. They're up 12 to 5, but by no means are they ahead. If anything, they're slightly behind considering Luna's farm. They're, they're behind now, but it, it just comes down to what can VGJ do with these kills, right? If they could convert kills into these tier 1 towers and get map advantage back, then it's going to be a pretty good look for VGJ. Remember, their, remember that bottom uh, tier 1 engagement where you thought it was somewhat of an overkill where they dropped the static storm? Yeah. I think when you could get a tier 1 tower after that, just to guarantee it, I, I think it's always a good choice to overkill. Easy haste it up, coming in mid. Nice snowball to the creep here, Fade. Gonna be brought down as the glimpse was there as well. TZ just gonna take a tier one of his own. So, while well, VGJ are getting towers, so are EG. Top lane, SF wants a tower of his own. Did go for the Yule's build. Got that burst damage potential, particularly good against a hero like Death Prophet. Maybe forced to build something like a BKB. Also, Mayor, we've seen him get initiated on so many times. There'll be one more. He pops the hood. He's very, very tanky. But they should have enough damage to bring him down. No real escape. He's going to throw out a Doom here. Crit's coming in. Impale gets thrown out as well. Okay. And they actually bring down Silas Luna here. There's the static stall here. Misery coming in. Looks for the heal bomb. But Luna's back to safety with the tower here. Fear arrived with an exorcism. But the problem is there's an SF. And this is looking like a disaster for EG. VGJ. They've got the numbers. They've taken out two already. Looking for Fear. who's trying to heal himself through this. But there's no chance for it. Brought down. SF still alive as well. Thanks with the help of the Yule Scepter. The Misery is next in the firing line. That's four dead. I don't think you call that one space created for Arteezy. I think you call that one a VGJ win. Yeah, that was excellent panda play here by Brewmaster. Not only did he get off the split to dodge the silence from fear, but also immediately sent his storm panda forward to just get themselves extra kills. That we see SF net worth continuing to skyrocket up to 1800 gold. So watching this team fight one more time, Doom letting it lose his ultimate, and that's a pretty big stun. Unfortunately, the, the EG member is just a little bit too late to the party. If the death proper was there like a couple seconds earlier, right? they killed that Luna. They needed sure. just one Spirit Siphon, or they needed like a Crypt Swarm on top of that Impale. And I think that's where it looked like it was so close to being a good fight for EG. That small like, split-second difference really decided the outcome. You could have had a three-man silence, Crypt Swarm, multiple Spirit Siphons, and Fear would have cleaned up. Or if the Dazzle could be there to grave the, the Doom, you know, there's a lot Absolutely. of things. That, the tier one being dead uh, in the bottom tower really costed that fight here for EG. Yeah. And on top of that, I think BGJ knew it was a good fight because they've got great vision down bottom. They've got a, multiple lane wards revealing a lot of what EG's doing. They know RTZ doesn't really choose to show up to any of these early game fights as well. So if they bring all five, it's going to be a 5v4 fight. Sure. I mean, even if he does show up to the fight, uh, you know, Morphling with Perseverance yeah. is not going to do much. Here comes a tier 1 siege, and this is kind of what I was talking about earlier. If VGJ could convert their early lead with hero kills into the map lead, then that's exactly what they're looking for. Get a tier 1 tower. There is some damage being dealt bottom by fear, but without the ultimate, and bring this tower down very slowly, and no real chance to finish it off. He needs to be careful not to get caught by a glimpse or anything. Mid lane crit found a disruptor. Okay. Glimpse back. He <laughs> actually lit. He's got a kinetic kill too. Yeah. It's I think it was just going for some harass there, really. Just so happened that Yang blinked away as the Impale was thrown, so he only hit one with it. Very odd, but... I really like this item choice for Sumail. If you look at the damage output for Thunder, it's pretty much all magical until Luna picks up some physical damage, which is going to be a long time from now. Yep. So the, the pipe is going to allow them to win those fights that they just lost just now. And they feel stronger. Smoke into smoke here. Two VGJ support. They do not want to fight into Sumail's Doom, especially with this pipe timing in. That's actually a great smoke pop coming out from VGJ. If they get caught there, if SF dies, oh. it's a huge disaster. They're going to get one glimpse back. They're going to try to bait out that Spike Carapace. A lot of control here. Spike has already oh, been SF used. Oh, maybe able to finish him off. They go with the blink clap here. He was piped up, so Crip blocking a lot of this damage, but SF was just hitting Creep. He's like, oh, you guys got this. Don't worry about it. Ooh, almost getting fear there. If they got that eye shots blocked, that would have been a dead death problem, most likely. Oh, man, that was such a fun engagement, because Shadowfiend was trying to 
animation cancel his rage multiple times. Brewmaster anima can animation canceling his ultimate. They're just trying to bait each other out using yep. their spells and spike carapace. And EGJ are playing incredibly well. Not, not to say EG or not, they've, they're kind of executing the classic EG game plan. Yeah. Four heroes roam around, do what they can while RTZ farms up a storm. As for VGJ, well, they've been fighting, taking right, the correct fights, avoiding bad situations, and they're up 17 kills to five. Now, of course, just being ahead is not going to win you the game. Told that yesterday. Yeah, the more experienced team knows how to close out the game, and that's always the big question for VGJ. Can they close out? Oh, what oh, no. He He's doomed up, but he's not going to get any follow-up. And nice disengage coming from VGJ. They static stomp the field. They chose not to take a fight. I think knowing that you're right by a tower. Morphling can TP in, and fear with exorcism at this stage of the game, very, very scary. Once SF gets doomed up, that's your main source of damage. They may smoke up here and try and take a fight on their own terms. Yeah, they're yep. gonna go right into that. I love the decision to smoke up here. They have a sentry. One of the most common war spot is have a ward there. And uh, make sure that your smoke is not down it. That's it, a big kill. It, oh, Yules is gonna delay it a little bit further, but easy race set up here for Freeze. I'm looking for <laughs> I love that Disrupt just runs forward. Like, let's see if this daytime vision will get me a glimpse kill. But... I mean, that's just thinking ahead. I mean, Yang did that earlier with the Dazzle kill as well. Just really yeah. smart, high IQ play. And then right into Roche. This is a very well executed game so far from BGJ. They've got to keep it up. We've seen it before. Get off to this hot early start, play everything right, but the late game is where EG shine. That's where Arteezy gets involved. He's got the link of Sphere, queued up Ethereal Blade. But it will be an agency in BGJ's hand. Let's, let's talk EG. Lumi, how good of a Morphling game is this? Like, is this a game where Morphling is going to be able to 1v5 carry the game like we saw Arteezy's Terra Blade do? I don't think so. There's a lot of ways to control him and just delay his kill. Uh, he can just one-shot the Disruptor, so the Disruptor needs to pick up a Glimmer K for himself ASAP. But I think RTC needs help. I, I don't think he could do it all by himself this game. So where is he going to get help from? Fair is behind. Sumail is going for a rather defensive build rather than an offensive one. And of course, you know, Dazzle is not exactly an offensive support, so it's, it's a rough one for EG down the stretch. Yep. It does look like BGJ want to try and prevent this going late game as much as possible. With the fast Roshan, they may try and take out all these outer T2 towers, really starve out EG, and on Ooh, top of that, Parker, Brewmaster Vlads. Look at the bottom lane here, crit. Meteor Hammer finish, trying oh, to set nice. up a gang. I love it. the meme hammer. I don't even think we can call it that anymore. It's well and truly proven to be a viable item. The change is received. Has Heroes actually gotten hit by Meteor Hammer yet and in this tournament? Who knows? Buildings have. <laughs> That's what matters. He doesn't. Have, right. it, it's one of those things where it's actually like pretty effective. You don't have to get the arcane boots because it gives you a nice little bit of uh, 12 in. It's decent mana regen, health regen with instant strength. Like, who doesn't want that? Yeah, any hero would be happy to get that kind of stuff. And Nyx Assassin normally has a lot of item choices. Comparatively, that's a Hannah Midas that he could have gotten. You know, this game can go long and looks like it will go long. Meteor hammering creep waves and then TPing out. <laughs> Wave clear, power push, disable. What more, what more do you need? Manta Star picked up on Shadow King. We're seeing Mantas on both VGJ cores. Good against the shotgun of Morphling, being able to dodge and disjoint the ethereal form if you need to. VGJ really wants to take a fight right now before their Aegis fades. They've smoked up behind the Shadow Fiend. Are they going to get a uh, here? Okay, he waves away. He has got the Lincoln Sphere. They pop it first. That sets up a glimpse into Static Storm. That's easy. In trouble. Brought down with the help of an Eclipse. They throw everything to make sure they get the kill. They may have not even needed an Eclipse, but why not? You've killed the one hero that is likely EG's main chance to win this game. There is a possibility of counterplay by EG. Buyback is available, and you just draw. They I just draw. Really want to buy back your Morphling. It's though. a big risk. Uh, you did see Eclipse being used, but. They're not going to defend this tier 2. High ground is how EG's going to hold for now. Oh, they're going to take a tier 2. They may, he may have to buy back just for, like you say, for the, the high ground defense. Crits there in the front lines. Blink in. Primal split. Perhaps his friend creates a space. The dude comes out on a Luna. Gets snowballed forward. Luna, though, does not have the aim. That's in the shadow feed. He drops a Requiem on Misery, forcing a defensive grave on himself. As it does look like EG will repel the VGJ push. The Doom on Luna and the Primal Split being thrown, but not really setting up any kills. Perhaps 
limiting VGJ's options there. Yeah, VGJ didn't really do that much tower damage either. They did trade the ultimate though of Fierce Exorcism, so honestly, they did defend EG, but on, they're not going to get too much out of that defense. There's no Roshan to claim, there's no tier 2 to really grab. They could grab a tier 2 at bottom, but yeah, it doesn't look like they'll go for a tier 3 or anything. Oh, I'm talking about EG. Like, oh, they, EG. they made a okay. successful defense, but that's it. No. it it's Either side's ult, I mean, you compare Exorcism for Split, isn't the Exorcism kind of more important and valuable? Like, if EG without it, I feel like, really struggle to fight. VGJ, yeah. as long as they've got this, like, I mean, we're seeing it now. They've got Aegis, they've got SM. Oh, they got Meteor Hammer. Boom. Okay. Drop Good defense. down. Yeah. Two men stun. With an impale to follow it up, there's going to be another Static Storm coming out. Female trapped in that one. The SM being brought very low. Aegis will pop great defense with the help of the Meteor Hammer. Fear in the front line, throwing out the Spirit Siphons. Still dealing good damage even without the ultimate. They're gonna set up another impale. He's just being kited around. Constant disables, and they say, well, no exorcism, no problem. We've got crit. Proving the value of the hammer. RTZ checking out his farm. He's going for a BKB, and I'm scared for EG fans, because I'm not sure if this BKB is gonna allow him to carry his team back. Yeah. I, I feel like he needs something hyper risky and hyper offensive like the Ethereal Blade to give him a shot. I, it seems to me the idea is he can, he wants to, skip, to play for the ultra late game, but to do that he needs to not be able to get picked off like we saw. The one thing that's going to kill him is that Disruptor glimpse back. He just wanted an item that stops himself getting glimpsed. Yes. In a scenario where, as we saw, his Lincolns gets broken. Your Lincolns gets broken, you wave away. Well, glimpse has a much longer range than your waveform does. And so I think we're going to see this be a, B, a farming BKB, not a fighting BKB. Yeah. And all, that's always a feels bad moment because BKB oh, yeah. as an item just doesn't help you farm that fast. It's yeah. nine times out of ten picked up to take fights. Yes. Oh. Fritz just looking, and here comes that meteor hammer. You'll dodge, perhaps? Okay, the fake out. <laughs> Get himself out of there, but losing a lot of his mana pool. G down for 8,000 gold. Here. They had an okay start early on, but VGJ have been the ones controlling the mid game here. Lane's being constantly pushed out. That was something that VGJ had trouble with yesterday, even when they were up 30 kills to 10 or something. All that their lanes were being pushed in, and they constantly had to deal with it. This time around, they're the ones pressuring EG's side of the map. And Gotta feel pretty good for them. They're gonna see this BKB on Arteezy and probably be a bit bummed that they can't kill him and do what they just did to him, but at the same time, it's a, it is a feels good for BGJ. They're like, well, this Morphing has a BKB, he's not scary. Yep. It's, it's a different story when Freeze pops his BKB, right? Because his ultimate is tremendously impactful and his right click actually hurts, you know, yep. unlike the Morphling who technically does more damage, but I don't think he could stand in the middle of fight the, the same way that Shadowfiend can. This is the kind of game I just feel like I've seen Arteezy in the past, you know, pull out through split push, through flashy plays on heroes like Morphling, Riken before, where, you know, you're down by a ton, but he's constantly split pushing a lane, finding ways to chip at your high ground, trading racks, whatever it may be, and that's something VGJ have to be very aware of. Yeah. VGJ just taking their time right now, but here comes a very decisive smoke gank for EG. Roshan They've got vision too. Oh, yeah. What on the high ground? Ayo in doing? the front line. If he gets caught here, that's team fight ultimate guard. Blink in. Oh, what have you got? Oh, to Mayo. No chance to use the dude. Possibly out of the Static Storm with the help of the grave here. Requiem gonna get thrown out to Mayo. Brought down. Wave in from Arteezy. But he's being right clicked down from Arteezy. He may be getting me. He's got no way for Arteezy's dead. Oh, no. It's a disaster. It's the Glitch back. Gonna catch another crit. Next in the firing line. Dazzle dead. And that is it. Almost team wipe here. It's about to be with fear. Unable to escape, I imagine. He has got a Yules as well as a TP scroll, but he's surrounded by five heroes. And it's a full five-man wipe, Lumi. They are drawing down oh. line to the mid lane. What fast reaction by Fade. That snowball dodge on the Doom. Static Storm to prevent the Doom. And after Doom came out of the Static Storm, he tried to Doom the Shadow Fiend, but he managed to dodge that one too. Was he actually aiming for the Doom? With I, It felt like he was he aimed on the Nyx. He aimed for somebody, but he got nobody. Yeah. Hey, look, I think he saw the Nyx and was like, oh, I got a snowball right away. And it just so happened Sumail like blinked into the sun. I don't think, it, I mean, it was great reactions to the Knicks. I don't think it was quite the godly reactions for the Doom that was even possible, but regardless, BGJ, high ground, mid racks taken. They're bottom now as well. They are perhaps about to give EG their first loss of the tournament, unless EG have something to say about it. They still have Doom, they which they're going to throw out on the SF, but there's no follow-up. At least on the SF, Brumas on the front lines, he's 
perhaps going to be the, the kind of sacrificial lamb. He's soaking up a bit of damage here already, but the chase is difficult. They're going to turn and fight. Snowball comes in. The Doom can be wearing off to. Static Storm's there on a couple of heroes here, and EG have lost three more. By the way, lo look at the positioning of Death Prophet right now. He is racing back in the middle of the map. The reason is he bought Luby. back. It's GG. Yeah, they call it GG. So, so Fair bought back, he poured it in, and he got glimpsed all the way to the previous fight where he died. So, he was just completely out of the fight. Yeah.